Hey YouTube, um, I'm gonna redo my review for uh, Dream Theater's brand new album, uh, Black Clouds and Silver Linings, because I deleted it and I am very dumb. So, um, yeah, so this is Dream Theater's brand new album. It's supposed to come out um, on June 23rd, and I am going to buy it, so don't get mad at me. Um, this album has six songs on it, that's about it, but the lengths definitely make up for it. Uh, the tracks are A Nightmare to Remember, A Rite of Passage, Wither, The Shattered Fortress, The Best of Times, and uh, The Count of Tuscany. Now, um, the uh, Nightmare to Remember is about 16 minutes long, but I'm missing the first minute of the intro as everybody, as if, you know, everybody's missing the first minute of the song. But the song starts off extremely heavy, and, uh, it's great. It's a great opener for the for this album. It starts off extremely heavy, and that goes on for about the first four and a half minutes, and then after that, it's very mellow for the next like three or four minutes, and it has one of the best choruses Dream Theater's ever done for sure. The mellow part's awesome. The guitar is great. The song has like two or three mini guitar solos, which Dream Theater's pretty much like has never done before, and. Um, there's a keyboard song here, which is pretty much a vocal melody, but it's awesome. There's a unison in there, and there's a part where Mike uh, growls, but it's it's cool. It's awesome, though. I mean, I, it's a good time to get used to, but it's awesome. But before that growl, there's awesome, awesome music going on there. So overall, kick-ass song. It's awesome. Next song, A Rite of Passage. Now, you probably have all heard the song either because it was their first single, or they released a music video for it. By the way, that music video was awesome. But, um, this song starts off with a bass intro, and, um, and then the band comes in, and I love the first verse a lot, actually. It uses a vocal effect, but it's still very, it's still awesome, though. I mean, James could pull, definitely pull that off live, no problem, but awesome. The chorus is, is extremely catchy, and, um, the song is about Freemasons, and uh, this is the only song that is not about a band member's um, life. Like all the other songs are about a band member's experiencing something, and yeah, so this is the only song that doesn't um, talk about a life experience. And uh, and I may remember was also about John Petrucci getting into a car crash when he was younger, but everyone survived. So sorry about not mentioning that before. Uh, Wither is the next song. This is only about like five and a half minutes, the shortest song on the album. The song is actually about writer's block, but it's beautifully written, and uh, James sounds awesome on this part, and there's an or orchestra part in the song, which is one of the best they've ever done, for sure. The guitar solo is just, tr it's like triumphant, it's like a, almost like a triumphant ending solo thingy. And uh, it's ironic it's about writer's block, because Dream Theater never experiences writer's block, so that's kind of ironic, actually. The next song... I Shattered Fortress, which, which is about 13 minutes long, this last song in Mike's AA Saga. Definitely tied up there with the Glass Prison. It's unbelievable. Starts off with a super heavy riff, which is brand new. And this song revisits all the previous songs, you know, like melodies or, or lyrics or something like that. But the new additions that they add in are awesome. It's, it's awesome. And um, the song... Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to tell you the ending of the, of the Shire Fortress, because I don't want to ruin it for you. So, awesome keyboard solo by Jordan in that song. Oh, it's like, it's his best on the album for sure, it's amazing. And, uh, it's just great, like, the, when they, the, when they put in the former AA songs, it's great. It's an awesome song. Alright, next song, and my favorite song off their new album is The Best of Times, which is also about 13 minutes long. This is about Mike's dad, who died of cancer. And this song starts off with a, a piano intro, and then it's accompanied by a violin for a little while, and then acoustic guitar. And that, uh, it's, it's one of their best intros I've ever done, for sure. And then it goes, and after that goes this crazy, complicated, trending thing. Most people, some people say it's out of place, but I think it actually is perfect. And it's, it's like, it's, the song sounds a lot like Rush, very Rush influence for sure. 
When the song makes you feel triumphant, makes you feel good about your best of times, the song has amazing singing. James sounds amazing on the chorus. I love his singing. And Mike sings back up, and he sounds amazing as well. And there's orchestra part in this song, too, which is just unbelievable. And uh, John Petrucci has a three-minute solo. One of his best ever. He hasn't done a solo that great in, like, I don't even know how long. It was just... Oh, amazing! It, it's it's just it's amazing. Like it's a it's a great tribute to Mike's father, and it's my favorite on the album by far. Not by far, but it's my favorite. Uh, last song, "The Count of Tuscany," 19 minutes long. This song has also one of the greatest intros Dream Theater's ever written in a very long time. Awesome unisons. This song is about John Petrucci going to Italy and being frightened by the count. Um, when he was in Tuscany, and the song has has heavy moments, and um, everything. This song is just amazing. Like awesome unisons, awesome singing, great music. Around the um, 12 minute mark, it goes into this like. Well, a lot of people think of it as different influences. Something Pink Floyd, something Yes. Whatever, but it goes in this part where it's just, it's very mellow, but it's awesome. When I first heard this song, I thought I'd drag it on for way, way too long. But actually, it didn't now. For, for, but now, I don't think it did at all. I think it's perfect, and this song has one of the greatest, greatest endings Dream Theater has ever done. I think it's better than the Octavarium ending, to be honest with you. I think it's way better than the Octavarium ending. It, it shits all over. The Count of Tuscany shits all over um, Impressions of Enemies, in my opinion. Um, it's definitely one of their greatest epics, and it's destined to be a Dream Theater classic for sure when uh, it finally comes out on June 23rd. So, all in all, Black Cloud and Server Linings, for me, gets a 10 out of 10. I think it's perfect. I think it's their best album since uh, Scenes from a Memory. It, like, narrowly, narrowly beats Six Degrees, but. I think it's their best since, um, Seeds from Memory. 10 out of 10, no doubt, easily. Uh, when this album comes out, June 23rd, go pick it up, support Dream Theater. You are not going to be disappointed. This album has old school moments, which will appeal for diehard fans. Sorry about the phone. It has, um, heavy moments, uh, that people who love Train of Thought like. It has, it's very diverse, just like Awake, Awake was back then. So if you if you want an album that's very diverse from Dream Theater, definitely go pick this one up. And uh, I'm sorry about deleting my former review of this, but um, I'm gonna try to redo some videos or add new uh, reviews. So thanks a lot, guys, for your time, and uh, I'll catch you later. See you.